In this video, we're going to hear from a civil engineering senior in university all about his civil engineering degree in 10 minutes, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Boris, and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. In the description below, you will see lots of great things, including the free 1% Engineer Kit, access to the Discord server with over 400 engineers already, and links to the IG page, so check that stuff out, guys. What kind of engineering major are you trying to be? What questions do you have? Comment below. Guys, this is a special video because we're starting this initiative called the 1% STARS program, where if you're a student, if you're a working professional, if you're anyone in engineering who has value to add, who has experience, who has something to provide 1% Nation, our community, with things that you've done, things that you've learned, things that you've seen and experienced, then you can be featured as a star on the show. You can be a 1% engineer star. So if you want to be featured in a video just like this one, comment below, let me know that you want to be a 1% star. With that being said, we're taking it back to a student who's in university right now to talk all about his civil engineering degree in 10 minutes. I'd like to introduce this video's star. His name is Nick Tran. He's a fourth year structural engineering student at Ryerson University in Toronto, Canada. It's a good school. One of our core team members went there. Shout out to you, Val Hustle. And Nick is a pretty ambitious engineer. He's really impressed me. He has his own website and he just wrapped up an internship for 15 months at a nuclear power plant. He's done a lot and he's seen a lot. So he's almost finished his entire four year civil engineering curriculum at Ryerson. So with that introduction, let's pass it right over to Nick to take us away with his civil engineering degree in 10 minutes. Thanks, Nick. Hey Jake, so thanks a lot for having me on your video today. Your channel has a lot of great content going over the different stories of engineers and I'm very honored to be a part of that. Before we get started, Nick, why don't you tell 1% Nation a little bit more about you and the classes that they may expect during first year. So a bit of background about myself. My name is Nick Tran. I'm about to go into my fourth year of structural engineering and I just came off of a 15 month internship working in the civil design department of a nuclear power plant. So in today's video, I want to go over some of my favorite courses going through university so far, uh, give you guys some tips of what I wish I knew going into the degree and some cues on whether or not civil engineering is right for you. So I just mentioned I'm about to go into my fourth year, which is a part of a five year program. And the way that engineering degrees in most Canadian universities work is that you can go into either a four year or five year bachelor program. And the only difference is that in the five year program, you take on a year long internship. But apart from that, all the courses are the exact same and there is not much difference. So let's jump into some of the first year courses. So our first year, as I'm sure many of you are aware, is very general and it's meant more to ease you into everyday university life. So you have your basic calculus one and two, you have your physics courses, your chemistry courses, material science, and there are some interesting courses out there such as your coding courses, your economics, and one civil specific course in our program which was a graphics course. So one of my favorite courses first year was the graphics course because it was a lot more hands-on and the projects were very applicable to the real world. So for example, one of our projects in that course was to model one of the existing buildings on campus in AutoCAD and that really made you think like someone who's actually in the industry and operate your project like an engineer. It was a great introduction to AutoCAD and we learned a lot about how to draft and best practices in that area. Great, thanks for that Nick. Is there any other advice for first year students? If you're going to go into the graphics course I'd highly recommend you take a look at AutoCAD and get familiar with drafting. Because in my experience, as a young engineer, you're going to be doing a lot of drafting, so you better get comfortable with some AutoCAD. Okay, thanks for that. Now, let's start to talk about second year. What can we expect as a civil engineer during your sophomore year? So going into our second year, which was our third and fourth semester, we got to take a good look into the three different streams that our university offers, where we would specialize in third year, which is really nice. So we got a good mix of environmental courses, transportation courses, and structural engineering courses. I want to point something out really quickly, guys, that Nick talks about how at Ryerson they have three streams within civil engineering. He says environmental, transportation, and structural. That's fantastic. This is going to vary depending on the school that you go to, how many that are offered and the ones that they emphasize. Because civil engineering is primarily structures, most civil engineering programs are going to emphasize that, and a lot of students are going to focus on that, just like Nick. 
at University of Delaware, where I went, we had this really powerful geotechnical professor from Eastern Europe. And so we had a lot of PhD students who want to work on foundations, retaining walls, deep settling bridge structures and things like this. And so apparently you can't even focus on geotechnical engineering at Ryerson. We also had a very powerful coastal engineering program within the civil engineering outlet. So this is gonna vary depending on the school that you choose. So again, guys, if you're interested in a certain outlet within engineering, a certain avenue within that, this applies for mechanical, electrical, computer, whatever, but Focus on a school that is going to prioritize the subfield within your industry that you want to target for your career. In particular, since I'm in the structural engineering program and that's what I enjoy doing, I found that the strengths of material one and two courses were some of my most favorite and most interesting because they gave us an introduction into shear, bending moment, and those are essentially what build the foundation of structural engineering. So an analogy I'd give to these two concepts is understanding your shear and bending moment diagrams is the same as knowing the alphabet to spell letters. So if you're gonna be a structural engineer, you better know your shear and bending moment extremely well. Okay, Nick, any other favorite courses to comment on? So one of the most interesting courses that we took in second year was a course called geology and that was basically going over what rocks are so in hindsight that doesn't sound too exciting or fun but it was really interesting learning about the different material properties of rocks and how those can affect your final design whether you're doing a pavement design a concrete mix design or a building design so what made that course so interesting is that we actually went on a scavenger hunt across the city looking for different types of rocks and that was an actual assignment that we got marks for. So that kept the course a lot more dynamic and interesting because we were running around the city actually finding out what these different types of rocks are and their end use applications. Awesome, scavenger hunt sounds like a lot of fun. The one thing that I think is relatable here because few programs are actually gonna do things like scavenger hunts, but there is a culture that's baked into every engineering program, how much they do things like field trips and how much they let students participate in research or how much they push their students into clubs or societies. Some universities even fund trips to compete in things like the traffic bowl or steel bridge or concrete canoe, these types of things. So certain universities have a reputation for these extracurriculars within their program. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, which all of you should be, look at schools like Ryerson. So our third year at Ryerson is basically when we choose which stream that we're gonna be a part of, which is a very exciting time. So the three streams that we could pick from were environmental, transportation, and structural. Personally for me, I went into the structural stream just because I really enjoyed the technical aspects of how buildings come to life and that's what I wanted to study and learn more about. So in our third year of structural, we started to take a look into the codes and standards that are behind the construction processes of these structures, such as the steel design code, the concrete design code, and the wood design code. And there were four very interesting courses in our third year. Two of them were CVL 313 and 312, which were our structural analysis courses. And that's where we took a deeper dive into determining what the flexions and rotations were of particular members. And we looked into what the finite element method was for programs like SAP and ETABS. So those two courses were very interesting because you started to take a deeper dive into the programs that we use every day in structural engineering and really gives you a greater appreciation for how much work actually goes into these programs as well as a structure's overall design. Great, any other interesting courses that you took, Nick? The other two courses that I found very interesting in third year were our steel and concrete design courses. And that's because we started to take a deeper look into the properties of these two very popular materials that are used in almost every single structure in existence. And not only did we look at their properties and how that affects their performance, but we also took a look into steel connection design and concrete reinforcement design of various concrete structures and beams. Of course, those four courses aren't the only interesting courses that we took in third year. I personally really enjoyed each and every single course that we took in third year, but in the interest of time, we'll skip over those for now. Thanks, Nick. Next, we'd love to hear about your internship experience after your third year. So after third year was complete, I had the opportunity to take on an internship in the civil design department of a nuclear power plant. And without going into too much detail, I thought this was overall a very great way to apply the theoretical knowledge that I learned in school 
and real world applications. And I found that a very valuable experience in my career so far. So if you're on the fence basically about taking an internship or doing a four year program, I would highly recommend that you do an internship that's a part of your program. But if that's not possible, then you should definitely consider doing some internships during the summertime between your uh, school years. I wanna comment on this really quickly, how critical internship and actual research or working or hands-on or some sort of applied experience really is. Again, whether you're shadowing a professor and volunteering, whether you are joining a club team or an engineering society and participating in something, an internship really is the pinnacle of ways to get your feet wet and get experience and learn. And this is just so key because not only do you have experience, but you have industry contacts now who can give you advice, who can introduce you to other people if you're not exactly sure that was the right internship for you. But getting internships is so key. I talk about this in so many videos. We have a lot of things about interview tips and informational interviews and strategies about how to utilize relationships with professors. So definitely check that out. We're gonna have some annotation cards here, guys, but go out there and hunt down some internships for sure. Thanks again, Nick, for the preview into your internship. And now that we know how important that is, maybe you can teach us about your senior year, about your capstone course, or some places will call that a senior design course. So I'm about to go into my fourth year and the big, big course in fourth year is the capstone course. And that's basically a design project where we take a real world project such as a building or a bridge and we design it from the ground up in a group of about five people. So I'm very excited for that going into fourth year and seeing what challenges come up with that. Yep, five person team is pretty normal. The reason for that is that a capstone course is trying to emulate what an actual engineering team is like. You may have a team leader, kind of like a team captain who does more communication with the professors or the advisors. I think we had three or four actual judges who were the analysts of our senior design project and when we did presentations. And so that person was more of the liaison between those people and your actual team. So if you wanna be a manager, leadership, MBA type of engineer, you should definitely try to be the team lead of your capstone course. Thanks a lot for getting this far through the video and I hope some of this information helps point you in the right direction. We do have some more good stuff in this video guys, but really quickly, Nick, why don't you let us know how we can learn more about you, keep in touch with you, connect with you, and find out more about a unique project you've been working on to stand out. We've talked a lot about that as well. So Nick, take it away with that. So I know I glossed over a lot of the details uh, through my university degree, but if you have any questions about my experiences or anything else, feel free to shoot me a message on LinkedIn and uh, we can have a chat over there. So again, guys, one of the ways that Nick has stood out and exemplified a 1% engineer is he has a website and he has this brand and he has content. And these are examples of things that you could do literally in your dorm room that can set you apart, put something on your resume, allow for you to meet other engineers. So maybe you should learn from Nick and start a blog or a YouTube channel or a podcast or a engineering Instagram page, whatever, it doesn't matter, but maybe you should. So since I'm already here, I thought I'd draw some attention to a side project that I've been working on recently called Structure Simplify, where we're basically creating simple and engaging graphics and animation on the construction processes of structures. We post one video a month on YouTube and three pieces of content to social media a week. So if you're interested in checking it out, be sure to check out the links in the description below. He also has this really cool free resume review service. So send Nick a message, go check out his website for sure, guys. Okay, do you have a comment on the future of civil engineering and any conclusions for all of your great tips here today, Nick? Overall, I've enjoyed my university experience so far and I'm excited for what the fourth year will bring. And I do see a bright future for civil engineering, especially in cities like Toronto, because there's a lot of expansion and projects going on all the time. If you're considering a degree in civil engineering, I'd say these are the three main aspects of it. Number one, it's a good balance of offsite and office work. Number two, there is a good variety of stakeholders that you'll be working with every day. And number three, the technical knowledge that is required in civil engineering work is not as demanding as other engineering disciplines. So these three characteristics can be taken as either positive or negative depending on your personality, but hopefully they'll help point you in the right direction. Oh, and one final note from Nick. If you are getting a civil engineering degree, that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll become a civil engineer. I think that engineering helps develop very strong analytical and logical problem solving skills, which is needed in any industry. And if you're combining these skills with management, finances, 
or even entrepreneurship that will help make you a very good candidate for a position in any industry. Hey, 1% Nation. I hope you enjoyed that video featuring Nick Tran. If you did and you want to become a 1% engineer and rise to the top 1% of your career, then make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. Comment below. What was your favorite part of this video? What do you want to see next? Make sure you see the description for the free 1% engineer kit, access to the Discord server and the IG page, guys. Comment below if you want to be featured in a video as a star, and we'll see you again in another video guys bye bye